I'd like you to imagine you're a third grade school teacher in a small town in Iowa, Riceville, Iowa, and you're trying to teach children what discrimination is, what racism is, shortly after the murder of uh, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Your problem is your kids are all white, your kids are all Protestant, your kids all come from farming and lower middle class families. They've grown up together, they know each other. How do you get them to feel, to experience at a, at a personal level what discrimination is all about? Jane Elliott was that teacher, uh, that school teacher at Riceville, Iowa, um, back, back in the early 70s. And she did what I think is one of the most powerful demonstrations of all time. Not, a, not by a psychologist, but by a third grade school teacher. Let's look at the power of negative expectations and the power of teachers to shape the reality of students. It's remarkable how small a difference among people can trigger prejudice and how hard it is to stop prejudice once it takes hold. In no time at all, we can create a totally new construction of reality to define those we dislike and fear because they are different. A provocative demonstration of the nature of prejudice took place not in a psychologist's laboratory, but at a school in Riceville, Iowa. Would you like to try this? Yeah. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? No. Is there any after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968, Jane Elliott, a third grade teacher, decided to teach her class just what it means to experience arbitrary discrimination. Elliott divided her class into two groups, the inferior brown-eyed people and the superior blue-eyed people. I mean, the blue-eyed people are the better people in this room. Oh, yes, they are. Blue-eyed people are smarter than brown-eyed people. Uh, my dad is a I got hoop with. Uh, is your dad brown-eyed? Yeah. One day you came to school and you told us that he kicked you. He did. Do you think a blue-eyed father would kick his son? Yeah. My dad is My dad's blue-eyed. My dad's blue-eyed. He's, blue He's never kicked me. My Greg's dad is blue-eyed. He's never kicked oh. him. Did George Washington have? Blue. 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 This is a this is a fact. Blue-eyed people are better than brown-eyed people. You brown-eyed people are not to play with the blue-eyed people on the playground because you are not as good as blue-eyed people. Well, the brown-eyed people in this room today are going to wear collars so that we can tell from a distance what color your eyes are. So the blue-eyed people each come up and get a collar. You can choose someone to put this collar on. It seems like when we were down on the bottom, everything bad was happening to us. The way they treated you, you felt like you didn't even want to try to do anything. It seemed like Mrs. Elliott was taking our best friends away from us. Were two of you boys fighting? Yeah, yeah. Jack. Russell and John. Russell. What happened, John? Russell called me names and I hit him. Hit him in the gut. What did he call you? Brown eyes. Did you call him brown eyes? They always call us that. We yeah. want to get all of the... Um, Stupid and no, well, not that. Yeah. But, oh, that's just the same way as other people call uh, black people niggers. Yeah. Is that the reason you hit him, John? Did it help? Did it stop him? Did it make you feel better inside? Did it make you feel better inside? Laugh at you when you do I watched what had been marvelous cooperative, wonderful, thoughtful children turn into nasty, vicious, discriminating little third graders.
in a space of 15 minutes. I think I learned more from the superior children than I did from the children who were considered superior, than I did from the children who were considered inferior, because their personalities changed even more than the others did. Oh, <laughs> Fifteen years later, a reunion brought together the former members of Mrs. Elliott's class. How are you? Oh, are you so fine? I'm so fine. All right, now, Raymond, why? I want to know why you were so eager to discriminate against the rest of these kids. At the end of the day, I thought the miserable little Nazi. <laughs> really, I just, I couldn't stand you. It felt tremendously evil. You could... All your inhibitions were gone. And no matter if they were my friends or not, any pent-up hostilities or aggressions that these kids had ever caused you, you had a chance to get it all out. I felt like I was a king, like I ruled them brown eyes. Like I was better than them. Happy. Boy, that day, after we went home, <laughs> and talk about hating somebody. Yeah. It was there. You hated me. Yeah, of what you were putting us through. Nobody likes to be looked down upon. Nobody likes to be hated, teased, or discriminated against. And it just boggles up inside of you. You, you just get so mad. There are four things I'd like to add to this very powerful demonstration. First is, the lesson of this demonstration is the most minimal cues of difference between people like eye color or lip size or virtually anything can be the basis of discrimination when authority adds values to one or another. Brown eyes is good, blue eyes is bad, thick lips are bad, thin lips are good, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a discriminable difference between people, other people can impose value to make one worthwhile and the other worthless. The second thing is, what happened when the tables were turned, when the brown-eyed kids were put in a position of superiority? They should have practiced compassion because they knew what suffering was all about based on their eye color. Instead, the sad message of Jane Elliott's study is kids learned about power. When they were powerful now, they used it against uh, their previous tormentors. So this is a big question. How do, we, how do we teach people compassion after they have suffered and not want revenge? Teach them reconciliation and not, and not retaliation. The third thing is that uh, uh, Mrs. Elliott in her class gave kids spelling and math tests every day. Can you imagine what happened when kids were in the superior versus inferior position? The interesting thing is when they were in the inferior position, their grades on math and spelling went down immediately. And the interesting thing is when they were top dog, when they were in superior position, their scores on their math and spelling tests went up. So here's an interesting thing about how your intellectual ability, your academic performance, is influenced by your attitude toward yourself. Whether you think you are superior, you actually perform better. When you think you are inferior, you actually perform worse. The last thing is Jane Elliott is no longer a school teacher. She goes around the country, I guess around the world, showing this power game, or not showing, having people experience the power game in, in colleges and in corporations. And again, she uses the most minimal difference. She can ask you, put, put out your tongue. Some people's tongue curls, some can't curl. And then she simply says, if your tongue can't curl, you're inferior. If it can curl, you're superior. And so she teaches people how the most minimal discriminable cue can be the basis of discrimination and the basis of using power to make other people feel worthless and helpless and make you and your group feel superior.